spider. Air-breathing arthropods having eight legs, calicery with fangs typically able to inject venom, and spinnerets that extrude silk are known as spiders, order Araneae. They are the largest group of arthropods and have the seventh highest species diversity of any group of living things. With the exception of Antarctica, every continent has spiders, and they have spread to almost every type of land environment. Taxonomists have identified 50,356 spider species in 132 families as of August 2022. Scientists disagree over how to categorize families, and more than 20 distinct classifications have been put out since 1900. In terms of anatomy, spiders, as with all arachnids, are different from other arthropods in that the typical body segments are fused into two tagmata, the cephalothorax, or prosoma, and the epistosoma, or abdomen, and joined by a small, cylindrical pedicel. However, since there is no proof at this time from either paleontology nor embryology that spiders ever had a separate thorax-like division, similar arguments can be made against the name abdomen, as all spiders have a heart and respiratory system, which are not typical of an abdomen. Spiders do not have antennas like insects do. Spiders have the most centralized neural systems of all arthropods, with the exception of the most primitive group, the mesotheli, as all of their ganglia are merged into one mass in the cephalothorax. Spiders have hydraulic pressure to extend their limbs rather than extensor muscles, which are present in the majority of arthropods. Their abdomens contain modified appendages called spinnerets that may produce silk from as many as six different types of glands. Spider webs come in a wide range of sizes, shapes, and stickiness levels. The spiral orb web may be among the earliest types of web known today, and tangled cobweb producers are more numerous and diversified than orb weaver spiders. Around 386 million years ago, spider-like arachnids with silk-producing spigots first evolved, but these creatures lacked spinnerets. True spiders, which are very close to the most rudimentary surviving suborder, the mesotheli, have been discovered in carboniferous rocks from 318 to 299 million years ago. Mygalomorphy and Araneomorphy, the two major subgroups of contemporary spiders, initially arose during the Triassic epoch, or more than 200 million years ago. Bagheera caplingi, a species, was classified as a herbivore in 2008, 8, but all other species that are known to exist are predators that primarily eat insects and other spiders, though a few large species also prey on birds and lizards. 400 to 800 million tons of prey are thought to be killed annually by the 25 million tons of spiders that inhabit the planet. Spiders use a variety of tactics to catch their prey, including running it down, lassoing it with sticky bolus, mimicking it to evade notice, and entangling it in webs of sticky material. The majority of hunters primarily use vibrations to sense their prey, but active hunters also have keen vision, and hunters of the genus Portia exhibit signs of intelligence in the choice of techniques and in their capacity to create new ones. Spiders liquefy their food by saturating it with digestive enzymes since their small stomachs can't accommodate solid foods. As arachnids lack the mandibles that crustaceans and insects have, they also crush food using the bases of their pedipalps. Male spiders identify themselves to potential mates by a variety of intricate courtship rituals in order to avoid being devoured by the females, which are often much larger. Males of the majority of species only participate in a few matings, primarily due to their brief lifespans. Silk egg casings made by females can contain hundreds of eggs. Numerous species females take care of their young by feeding them or carrying them around. Handful species are social, creating social webs that can contain anywhere from a few to 50,000 people. The social spectrum includes cooperative hunting and food sharing to fragile toleration, as seen in widow spiders. Tarantulas and other mygalomorph spiders can live up to 25 years in captivity, but most spiders have a lifespan of little more than two years. Scientists are currently investigating the use of spider venom in medicine and as non-polluting pesticides, even though certain species' venom is harmful to humans. To see if these organisms can be employed as silk producers, spider silk genes have been put into mammals and plants. Spider silk offers a mix of lightness, strength, and elasticity that is superior to that of manufactured materials. Spiders are frequently shown as symbols of patience, harshness, and inventive abilities in mythology and art because of their diverse range of actions. 
Arachnophobia is the term for fear of spiders that is illogical. Sticky webs are the most well-known method of prey capture. Insects fly up from plants beneath flat horizontal webs, which capture them, while flat vertical webs trap them when they fly horizontally. This allows different species of spider to trap different insects in the same location. The vision of web-building spiders is weak, but they are very sensitive to vibrations. In order to digest their meal, molt, reproduce, and raise their young, the females of the water spider Argeronita aquatica weave underwater diving bell webs that are filled with air. They spend almost all of their time within the bells, darting out to capture prey creatures that touch the bell or the threads holding it in place. A few spiders utilize the lake and pond surfaces as webs, finding trapped insects by the vibrations those creatures make as they struggle. Small webs are all that net casting spiders make, yet they modify those webs to catch prey. Those belonging to the family Theridiosomatidae and genus Hypsiode stretch their webs before letting them go when prey strikes them, nevertheless, they do not actively move their webs. In order to catch prey, members of the family Dianopidae weave even smaller webs, hold them outstretched between their first two pairs of legs, and launch and push the webs up to twice as far as their own body length. This action can expand the web surface area by up to 10 times. According to experiments, the ground predator Dinopus spinosus uses two separate methods to capture its prey, forward strikes to capture ground walking prey that it sees, and backward strikes to capture airborne insects, whose vibrations it detects. Other dianopids have also been seen to employ these two strategies. Most dianopids eat walking insects as their primary prey, however one population of Dinopus subrufa appears to subsist mostly on tipulate flies that they grab with the rearward strike. Mastophora bola spider mature females create webs that are only one trapeze line long, which they then patrol. Additionally, they create bolus from a single thread and a sizable ball of extremely sticky, wet silk at the tip. They release substances that resemble moth pheromones before swinging the bolus at the moths. Despite missing on roughly 50% of their attempts, they catch roughly the same number of insects each night as spiders that spin webs of a similar size. If they haven't made a kill in around 30 minutes, the spiders devour the bolus, take some time to rest, and then construct fresh bolus. Male juveniles and adults have substantially smaller bodies and do not produce bolus. Instead, they expel several pheromones that draw moth flies and then capture them with their front pairs of legs. Many tarantulas, the ancient Lophistiidae, and the trapdoor spiders of the family Tenazidae are ambush predators that hide in tunnels that are frequently closed by trapdoors and frequently encircled by networks of silk threads that warn these spiders to the presence of prey. Many crab spider species and other ambush predators lack such help. A few species of bee predators, who perceive ultraviolet light, may change their UV reflectance to match the blossoms they are hiding in. Wolf spiders, leaping spiders, fishing spiders, and some crab spiders all catch prey by chasing it and mostly use their vision to find it. In order to defeat prey, Portia uses both webs and sly, adaptable strategies. Some jumping spiders in the genus Portia hunt other spiders in what appear to be sophisticated methods, outflanking or coaxing their prey from their webs. Studies conducted in the lab demonstrate that these spiders swiftly learn how to defeat new prey species by using trial and error as their primary method of attack rather than Portia's instinctual strategies. Although their brains are significantly smaller than those of mammalian predators, they appear to be somewhat slow thinkers, which is not surprising. To mimic the three distinct regions, tagmata, of an ant's body, ant imitating spiders typically develop slimmer abdomens and false waists in the cephalothorax. They also wave the first pair of legs in front of their heads to resemble antennae, which spiders lack, and to hide the fact that they have eight legs rather than six. 
Finally, they develop large color patches around one pair of eyes to hide the fact that they typically have eight simple eyes. Because female spiders are typically significantly larger than males, male and female spiders in some species mimic different ant species. In order to duplicate the behavior of the target ant species, ant impersonating spiders also change their behavior. For instance, many of them move in a zigzag pattern, imitation jumping spiders don't jump, and cinemosina spiders walk on the margins of leaves like pseudomermix. Many spiders and other arthropods may mimic ants as a kind of defense against predators that hunt by sight, such as birds, reptiles, and other spiders. However, a number of spiders that mimic ants feed either on actual ants or on their livestock, such aphids. When at repose, the ant imitating crab spider Amycea does not resemble the caphila very much, but when it is actively hunting, it mimics a dying ant's behavior in order to draw in worker ants. After a kill, certain ant impersonating spiders hold their prey in between themselves and sizable ant colonies to prevent being attacked. <laughs>